Hello friends, today we are going to see another important topic from the Kubernetes. If you are already working or you may heard about init container on Kubernetes, right? So today we are going to discuss about init container and what is that and what is the usage about it and also some use cases and we'll demonstrate one of the use case from that, right? Let's jump into the video. And before we jump into that, let's refer the blog we already published. So you can refer this blog and here we have explained what is the init container. So init container is nothing but before you are starting any application, you want to perform any the pre-steps. Pre the steps can be anything or you can put some dependency hold. Maybe you have to wait for some time until the previous application or previous operation to be complete. Right. So those kind of situation, the init container will be so much useful and you can use it in the end uh, along with your application. Okay. So this will be resist inside the pod and inside single pod, you can keep more than one init container that is allowed, but you can see it runs always sequentially. So to make sure that there is no none of the parallel tasks running and one is failed another one is proceeding so due to that it should not do any kind of a misleading to the service to start it. right so those kind of restrictions will allow to have a better availability for your application and also it will have smooth start process for the application right so what are the properties it contains so you can Keep any scripts or any kind of a commands or with the init containers to make sure that it will be succeeded. Until that succeed, the application won't be started, right? And it's also it has to be completed and it will run. It will be running on the sequential manner. There will be a more than one init container in the sense it will go one by one, right? And it supports all the fields, whatever your app container supports, like a resource limit or volume, or do you want to check a security settings, everything supports, but there is a limitation. It won't support any kind of a life cycles and it won't support any kind of a probes. It's not run to the completion, right? So it's not needed. Obviously there is no props are needed, but this you should keep it in the note, right? So next is use cases. What are the use cases the init container suits? So this we covered mostly and there will be a something with, within your organization. You can pick your own use case and you can use it, right? So as per the most used uh, use cases, so one is like a, you can use to run any kind of a pre script or any commands, again, the utils can be like any kind of your application may have like a prerequisite scripts to be run. So those kind of situation, you can use this init, init scripts, uh, init container, then you can start your application. So which will be set a baseline for your application. So that underlying parts can be done with the init containers. And then secrets. So in case you want to put the secrets from the vault or something, you don't want to store it in the Kubernetes secret. So those kind of situation, you can use this init container to pull that, uh, pull that secret and you can just store it in the application configuration file, such as like uh, if you're using a Java application, it can be set it in the DB property file. It's up to first for the each and every application, right? So the certain files, it stores the credent security credent secrets. Okay, so next something like you want to do automation backup before you starting application, you want to take one set of backup or you want to retain the backup, those kind of use case. Also, you can put it on that. Either it can be a data backup or it can be a database, right? So anything you want to take one backup, let's assume like you are upgrading your application from XYZ to ABC and you want to take one precautionation data backup along with database backup, you can use init container to do that. So until you complete, it won't proceed to any kind of other application start or stop, right? So it will make sure like you have a data stored somewhere securely before your upgrade. In case your upgrade got failed or it may got something missed, 
right? So that time will be so useful for you to just quickly restore the previous version, right? It's not suit for the most of the version because Kubernetes is well matured on some things. But um, this case will be suits for very complex application which need a manual interaction for the restore or data interaction. So those times, this kind of uh, containers will be so much useful, right? And you want to clone some JIT repository from that, you want to do something. So any kind of operations, you can do that. And let's like, uh, let's wait for some service to be started until you have current application to be started, right? So those kind of scenario also it starts and also you want to delay your application to be started quickly. Rather it has some dependency that will be as I said in the previous, there will be a service. So there is some other operation maybe like a, some a script you are running in somewhere and until that completes, you want this application to be in halt state or it should not be started, right? So even those kind of us, uh, situation you can use this init containers okay hope this may give some headlines so let's see the demo now so in the demo we're going to demonstrate as following there is a service called take init service and we are going to create a pod which will contain container and init container this init container will make sure this tech service is reach, reachable until this tech service is reachable this main container will be on wait state. Okay, let's see in the demo. So how we can do that and how this will be taken care by init container. And this will be very quick demo as uh, so there is no much here. So we need to just put some condition. That condition should be matched, right? So that we're gonna make sure now and we're gonna test it. Okay, so let me quickly log into my box. So this is my box. In my box, I have already two files. One is pod.yaml and which will have my init container and main container details and take init service will have the service details. Let's quickly take a look first the pod.yaml. So you can see in the pod.yaml, we have named and this is just a reference Nginx and we have named the service check. And we are using a busy box image and we put a certain command. The command will do as following. It's kind of a basic script, shell script. Until the NS lookup for tech init SVC completes, it will be keep echoing that waiting for tech service and it slips for two seconds and it will be done. Right. So this is the condition we wrote. So we're going to test it. So before that, let me show you the tech init service. So there is a service file, which is listening on port 80 and, and there is a backend. Again, the backend will have a label and this will be referred in the services. And then, so this is same image what we are using, right? So this is very simple one. So let's first quickly create a pod and see that as that waiting for the service. So before that, let's confirm there is no services running. So to, we can make sure that, okay, so there is no service running at this moment. What we can do, you can just play the import.yaml. And when we check the pod dot, when we check the pods, it will be on a waiting state. You can see there is no pod is ready and it's waiting for the init container, right? It's in the initialization step. Let's confirm that by checking the logs. In the logs, if you check, you can see, see the Nginx is the main container and that is waiting for this step and also it's stuck in the initialization, right? So what we're going to do, so let's quickly check the particular pod detail, particular container logs. So for that, I'm going to check the name of the pod. So and then I'm going to check the same logs command with iPhone C and the container name. So you can see it here. So it's, it's trying to do the NS lookup and it's as it's not succeeding from the QDNS. So it's telling waiting for the tech init service to come up. Right. So now what we're going to do, so we're going to quickly create the 
create the service and see that fixing the issue. So kubectl apply fnf take init service. All right, so the pod and service is ready. So let's check the pod is up. So still it's in creation state, still creating. So until it's get created, the pod will be there. And let's quickly check the service here. Okay, the service is good. Okay, still the pod is in creation state. So let's wait for a minute. So now the pod is back and we can see it's running, right? You can see another pod also running. So let's quickly check the again the logs to make sure the log is completed perfectly. You can see this able to resolve now. So this is a service and this is IP address and this is a fully qualified domain name, which is nothing but let me quickly. Okay, so the fully qualified domain name is nothing but the service name or namespace and SVC dot cluster dot local. So with that, we make sure that the pod is waiting for the certain service and once the service is up, immediately we can check the pod is open. So you can check the pod is, both the pods are running fine, right? So we like this, you can implement similar situation and you can hold it and when it's complete, you can use it. So this C1 compiler, we can enable it for some other dependency service to complete. Like if you have any kind of a database you are running somewhere and database has to be ready or up. So that time also you can use or you are using some cache server like a Redis and that has to complete some certain jobs to be satisfied. So until then your main application has to wait. So that situation also you can use it. So similarly, you can find a ways to do that. And this is just a basic summary. In future, we'll see some complex scenarios when it comes and we'll explain you in more details. Until then, bye-bye, take care.